So Xiaomi might not be a household name in the US, but the Mi 11 is one such super smartphone that really ought to be available in North American markets as an alternative to the similarly solid Galaxy S21 series. But we're going to find out why. My first instinct when picking up the Mi 11 out of the box was just how sturdy and packed it feels in the hand. I must admit I'm still undecided as to what premium really means when it comes to tech, but the Xiaomi Mi 11 certainly feels expensive or premium by a very base definition. I personally love a good flat display as much as the next person, but there is something tantalizing about curved glass. It's soft, smooth, and the ice blue color finish does look like it will handle scratches and dings really nicely over time. There's a distinct weight to the Mi 11 that is kind of hard to accurately comprehend unless you do pick it up for yourself. The balance is still really good, but the device is slightly top heavy courtesy of a larger three stage camera bump. It's a big old chunky portion to have at the rear of your device, but it does pack in some seriously solid tech. I can't really say that I like those weird corner caps though, but there is clearly a protection here or for the display if you do happen to drop it. The design is eerily similar to the Huawei P40 Pro that we saw last year in that regard, and it looks just as weird as it did on Huawei's flagship. The button placement as well is focused on the right side of the chassis, which is okay, but having flitted between devices as of late, I really like the volume rocker to be lower than the sleep-wake button. It's a minor gripe in an otherwise standard fare. Overall though, the design fuses a number of good ideas into a fairly attractive package that is well put together, yet manages to retain a uniqueness that is something often lacking in the smartphone space, but kudos to Xiaomi for achieving it with so many little things thrown into the mix. The display on the Mi 11 really is flagship grade and it provides one heck of a platform for you to enjoy your favorite apps, games, movies, and video content. It's large and spacious, but the weird bezel arrangement and the shape of it does happen is, or almost is the result of those corner notched bezels and it can be hard to get used to. Only an upper left punch hole permeates that QHD plus display and it laps the edges of those side bezels. However, there is a slight chin and mini forehead protruding through. It's not enough to be a problem, but there are a few software related issues to this design that I did notice ahead of time. Put, simply put, the full screen gestures can be affected because of this design and MIUI 12 itself, which we will delve into later on. I actually thought that the Mi 11 initially utilized an under display earpiece too, but Xiaomi has actually slimmed down the cutout to the point where it's practically invisible. The punch hole though does feel as though it's justified to the right slightly more so than I would personally like. Those gripes do melt away instantly when the Mi 11's QHD plus panel is in full flow. Being able to run at 120 hertz at a native resolution is a huge bonus, although some apps will revert to 60 or even 90 hertz, which you really won't notice, and that is usually just to save battery life. There is also an Apple True Tone clone here that tunes to your current lighting conditions, but personally I'd just suggest slapping it into the saturated mode and enjoying real technical experience on your smartphone. Sure, accurate colour rendition is here, but sometimes it's nice to just dial things up and on such a good panel, I highly recommend doing so for maximum enjoyment. MIUI 12 with Android 11 does ship with the Xiaomi Mi 11, and to borrow a very British cliche, it's a very much like a Marmite skin, and by that I mean you will either love it or you'll hate it. I find MIUI fairly abrasive sometimes, and there are some changes made what feel like for the sake of change, and that leads to some confusion, and in many cases, bugs and UI issues. A major case in point would be the notification shade. The layout is fairly standard, but when connecting to Bluetooth earbuds, such as the Pixel Buds, a notification can be unceremoniously cut in half. This leaves a portion of the actual notification missing, therefore lacking in some important detail, such as the earbud battery percentage. The dark mode causes problems with multiple apps as MIUI 12 sees fit to change the colour schemes in order to fit its overall aesthetic. To rectify, you'll need to delve into the heavily altered settings menu to turn off dark mode on an app-by-app -app basis. Even if an app does have a dedicated dark mode, it may look different on the Mi 11 as the OS applies another dark layer of paint over the top. It's frustrating at times and it's infuriating for the most part. Simple little things can feel crowded and unorganized. The usage of an Apple-like control center is something you should disable immediately as it renders the swipe down from your home screen ineffective or at least very convoluted. One major reason I find sticking with a Xiaomi phone for massive extended periods of time has always been the organization of the settings menu though. 
It's just a chore to find things that would otherwise be in sensible places in other OEM skins. It does take quite a lot of effort to find your way around if you've become accustomed to other Android devices, and it does make things incredibly frustrating throughout the day. I cannot deny though that if you do like extra features, then boy do you have them with the Mi 11. Xiaomi has a laundry list of extras that are available right out of the box. Floating window options, the change to a recent menu UI, a Zen mode copycat control center, plus way, way, way more. To me at least though, the software design and UI decisions do hinder what is almost ludicrous performance courtesy of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset and 8GB of RAM. I've yet to try and do something that the internals can't handle. Gaming, multitasking, rendering 4K video with Premiere Rush, the Mi 11 doesn't even break a sweat. I can't foresee anyone though picking up the Mi 11 and having daily performance issues though. It is simply a beast that complements or competes with the very best on the market right now. I must admit though, I'm in two minds about the Mi 11 camera setup, as on the one hand, the 108 megapixel camera sensor is awesome and provides plenty of flexibility, as even when you digitally crop in, it doesn't hugely diminish photo and video quality. However, sometimes it still would be nice to be able to punch in and retain true detail. Being able to take native 108 megapixel images is also a really neat feature to have, but the pixel binned 27 megapixel or even five megapixel super pixel shots are less noisy and still retain plenty of detail. The end results are very good. No, I won't say they're the very best on the market you'll see from a smartphone, but the Mi 11 really does hang in there with the best of the industry. Dynamic range is really solid and colors have been dialed back to be more accurate when the AI scene detection is deactivated. The massive sensor provides great depth of field rather than relying on a dedicated portrait lens and the level of detail has me wanting to take images. Granted, it isn't all perfect, the night mode can be a little grainy and noisy, but then again, show me a smartphone night mode or night shooting mode that isn't, and I'll call you a liar. There happens to be a ton of editing tools within that slightly cluttered camera app that might appeal to people wanting to tweak their images and even videos. The AI sky editing is actually very impressive and it allows you to superimpose various day and night conditions by detecting the skyline and making necessary adjustments. It's definitely a massive gimmick, but one that produces eerily convincing results. Video modes are similarly stacked with the Mi 11 capable of shooting in 720p all the way up to 8K at 30 FPS. HDR video is also present and is available up to and including 4K at 30 FPS. Then if you want to knock things down a notch, solo motion is offered at up to 1080p at 480 FPS. But for most people, being able to shoot at 60 FPS and then slow in post is probably more than fine. There are also plenty of modes available with the OIS helping ensure that things look silky smooth at whatever resolution you happen to shoot at. The resulting video at the various resolutions is very good. Autofocus does kick into gear a little too frequently for my own taste, and certain colors such as greens can be a little oversaturated, but I have been very happy with what video I have shot on the Mi 11. The OIS is pretty fantastic in my experience, even when shooting handheld and moving. And now for the one area that sort of lets down Xiaomi's efforts with the Mi 11, the battery longevity. I find that battery life is normally one portion of a device that I find really hard to compromise upon. Sure, the 4,600 mAh cell is fairly big, it just doesn't quite manage to outlast the competition. Sure, you'll get a day of normal or moderate usage with some light gaming and even some video streaming without too much stress, straight into the heavy usage camp though, and things start to get a bit precarious. By the end of the day, I would regularly see the percentage figure in the upper right of the Mi 11 display, under that 10% mark, and that's with moderate usage. So while the battery is a bit of a question mark, dang, is that 55 watt charging a godsend. The addition of 50 watt wireless charging with a supported charger is also another huge bonus. Just 10 minutes would get me 20 to 30% back, meaning any stress that I may have had with battery life was alleviated. What's even nicer is the inclusion of a gallium nitride charger in the box, so you don't even need to shell out for extra access to such fast charge speeds. It actually takes less than an hour to go from zero to 100% with that bundled 55 watt charger. Just what it will do to the long-term lifespan remains pretty unclear as heat does destroy batteries, but at least for now, it almost is essential if you plan on being glued to the Mi 11 for hours upon hours each day. I want to touch upon a few things though before we wrap up this review. I commented during the Poco X3 NFC review that Xiaomi has done a really great job with the haptics on such a budget device. Well, that has continued here. The Xiaomi Mi 11's haptics are nothing short of superb. Typing and tapping feels great with plenty of body, although we're still quite away from the taptic engine found on Apple devices, 
Android OEMs are really starting to catch up and get close, and the Mi 11 is testament to that. The Harman Kardon tagged speakers on the Mi 11 actually aren't bad at all either. There is a fairly deep level of bass that won't wow you, but all types of video and gaming content is elevated thanks to that speaker setup. The only downside is that the positioning means that you might muffle things accidentally when holding the phone in landscape. So my time with the Mi 11 has not been perfect, but there is no denying that if you can get it in your region, it's a real contender for the best device of 2021 so far. Granted, pickings are slim and Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 powered Android devices are few and far between right now. I'm concerned about the software situation as there has been little information as to how long the Mi 11 will be updated or supported with no update schedule forthcoming from the firm. The camera is pretty fantastic, but with a few quirks and traits that you will have to learn to love. It is a shame that a periscope zoom lens wasn't added to the mix to really complete that camera package, but it is pretty good all the same. At least to me, this isn't a direct competitor to Samsung's Galaxy S21 Ultra, although it does encroach a little in most core areas. A Mi 11 Ultra is set to arrive in the coming months, which will likely bump the camera capabilities and likely the price to give the S21 Ultra a true direct competitor. If Xiaomi can make a few tweaks, it might be among the best to hit the market at this early stage of 2021. With all of those concerns put to the side though, the Mi 11 is a very impressive package that runs well, has a good camera, great display, fairly middling battery, and it comes in at a price lower than the base level Galaxy S21. In terms of sheer specifications alone, there's nothing out there right now that can compete in terms of value. It's just a shame the software lets things down in terms of usability, as Mi UI 12 is the most feature rich OEM skin that we've ever used. So what are you thinking though? Is the Mi 11 the best phone out there right now? Are you planning on picking one up in the region if it is available to you? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.